Konnichiwa and welcome to episode 54 of the Leadership Japan series and I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, President of Dale Carnegie Training Japan and much more importantly, you are a student of leadership, highly motivated to be the best in your business field. If you enjoy the program, then you might consider subscribing on iTunes also if you'd like your own access to 102 years of the accumulated wisdom of Dale Carnegie Training through free white papers, guidebooks, reports, training videos, blogs, course information, plus much, much more, then go to japan.dalecarnegie.com. Today we are going to discuss philosophy. In fact, we're going to discuss the philosophy of sales. Like a lot of people, I subscribe to various sites that send out useful information, uplifting quotes, etc, etc. The following morsel popped into my inbox the other morning, and it said, this is by Anonymous, it said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I'll repeat that. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Wow! What a powerful reminder of things that really matter in our interactions with others. This piece of sage advice should be metaphorically tattooed onto the brain of every single person involved in sales or persuasion. Well, don't miss it. Selling stuff is a tough gig. Rejection is a normal response to our spiffy sales presentation and follow-up offer. You have to be tough to survive in a sales job. You need other things too. Product and technical knowledge is important. Total command of the detail is expected by clients. However, we need to be careful about what we focus on. Are we letting the product details and features confuse us about what selling is really all about. Some salespeople I've encountered remind me of an icy mammoth trapped in a time warp from the past. They're still trotting out the product brochure and seeing if I will go for one of their goodies. Oh, you don't like that one? Well, how about this one? Or this one? Or this one? Ad nauseum. I want blue, but they keep showing me 50 shades of pink. They're playing that pathetic, failed salesperson game named process of elimination. I want to buy, but are they really showing me they are focused on understanding me? Are they demonstrating to me that their foremost care is about my benefit? Are they communicating to me that in your success, Greg, is my success? Or do they come across not with stars in their eyes, but dollar signs? I can recall seeing them sitting across the table from me, mentally salivating at the thought of the big fat commission my sales is going to mean for them and what this sales conversation will mean for them. I can sense they've already bought the Beamer before the ink is dry. The quote at the beginning People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care reminds me of a great Japanese word which should be embraced by everyone in sales. That word is kokoro gamai. Kokoro gamai. It can be simply translated as preparedness. But the Japanese nuance goes much deeper than that. Anyone studying a martial art or a traditional Japanese art, do, the way, do, michi, will immediately be on my wavelength when they hear this word kokoro gamai. I would prefer to translate it as getting your heart in order. This means to really hark back to your most basic principles of true intention, what we call true north, the purity of our intention. What is the spark? in our heart driving our behavior. Is it the money or is it the serving? 
Is it what you want or what the client wants? Is this going to be a long-term relationship or a fleeting one-off transaction? Salespeople need to start by searching their heart for their true intention. Huh? Does this sound a bit too huggetry, California emotional for you? Why do I recommend searching your heart? Because clients can sense your motivation isn't centered on their best interests and therefore they won't buy from you. Of course there are exceptions. The Hollywood image of the smooth talking salesperson who can sell you anything and will certainly try to. They are like skyrockets, initially blaze through the night and then bang, they explode. They are here for a good time, not a long time. And they give the profession of sales a bad brand. The best salesperson I ever interviewed for a sales job was actually a criminal. Now the criminal part didn't surface immediately, but came up later through some background checks. Note to sales managers, do background checks. This guy was absolutely brilliant in the first two interviews. Polished, genius personified in the role play for sales. And wow, what a closer! I thought, yes, yes, at last, I've found my perfect Japanese salesperson. Actually, he was a liar, a thief, and a baddie. He had zero True North orientation, and his Kokoro Gamai was plain wrong. What a wake up and smell of coffee for Greg that was. So, let's ignore the outliers, those riffraff of sales and come back to the vast majority of salespeople who are not evil, just inept. Change your heart. Focus on true north. Purify your intentions. Show you genuinely care about the buyer's best interest before your own. If you do that every single time you meet a client, you will have great success in sales and be able to build a power personal brand. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then you might consider subscribing on iTunes. Remember, to access your Dale Carnegie free white papers, guidebooks, training videos, blogs, course information, plus, 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 much, much more, then go to japan.dalecarnegie.com